Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Padilla. Senator Haruna. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and congratulations to each of you on your nominations. I ask the following two questions of all nominees to, um, uh, for any of the committees on which I sit. So I will ask each of you, and we'll start with uh, Judge Bryant in responding. Since you became a legal adult, have you ever made unwanted requests for sexual favors or committed any verbal or physical harassment or assault of a sexual nature? No, Senator. No, Senator. No, Senator. Have you ever faced discipline or entered into a settlement related to this kind of conduct? No. 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 Judge Bryan, I must say that presiding over 8,000 cases and 100 or 120 trials, that is impressive and to be reversed only nine times. Now, I note that you testified that you uh, apply precedent faithfully and objectively in deciding your cases. I think it, you said that. Yes. That's, uh, that's commendable. And Ms. Lee, you have been questioned by some of my colleagues about things you have written, and uh, ostensibly maybe those things reflect your uh, views on certain things, but would you agree with uh, Judge um, Judge Brian, that the way you, uh, you've been a judge for five years now, is that correct? That's right. And, quite, and that you too right. apply the law faithfully and objectively uh, in yes, deciding? Senator. Uh, yes, Senator. It's one of the things I take very seriously. And similarly, in terms of the reversal rate, which I've had, which is only less than three, I've tried to do and reflect it, I think, as well. Reflects in my record as well. Regarding the, the, uh, your um, writing uh, that, that talked about uh, trans, how transgender persons, immigrants, and racial minorities are treated in prison, I can, I can agree with you that, uh, and, and with Judge Brian, that these are, um, I would say, marginalized groups. And um, basically, you and I, and I in particular, you and I are part of the marginalized, group, marginalized groups. We know how people can be treated in a way that is highly discriminatory. So I can only um, envision that in a, in a prison setting, uh, th that becomes even more, it can become even more pronounced in terms of discrimination. So you have an understanding of, uh, of those kinds of environments. Thank you very much for, for that. Now, both of you, both you and, and Judge Brian, have talked about how important mentoring is. Can you just explain, a, a, describe a little bit more about someone whose mentoring meant so much to you, Judge Lee? Uh, there have been multiple people I've been very fortunate, um, both in terms of uh, the district court judge who I had met, mentioned, Jerome Turner, and as I'd mentioned earlier, we were very different people coming from different backgrounds, mm -hmm. but he, he embedded me a fundamental respect and was very rigorous about it in terms of the rule of law and the value of precedence. Mm -hmm. We might disagree about a lot of things, but we always agreed about the law. And in terms of doing that, I've held that rigor in terms of my analysis as a judge now, making sure that I'm finding, following binding Preston otherwise, and applying it. And then for the Ninth Circuit, I would say Judge Turner always told me to go back to the community, and I've tried to do so. I mean, Judge Ferguson has always told me to go back, and I've tried to do so. One of the things that, that you wrote about is the, the, the barriers facing formerly incarcerated people upon reentry, and uh, how, um, how important it is to provide them uh, avenues where they can reenter the community, and recently the only federal halfway house in my state of Hawaii was closed, and this reentry facility was vital to our community, and I have been fighting to reopen this facility in order to provide these important services. Could you tell us briefly more about the importance of having a reentry program uh, for decreasing recidivism and reintegrating, reintegrating formerly incarcerated people who, by, by the way, most incarcerated people do get back into the community. Why are these reentry programs so important? Uh, thank you, Senator, for that question. Um, I think, as you mentioned, um, at the time when that piece was uh, was written and discussing, it was a relatively new issue and one which I was not as familiar with. 
um, later on when I was at Hastings, making sure that people knew uh, service to be provided, making sure uh, that they knew uh, the remedies which they would have is something I focused on later on while I was at UC Hastings. And across the board, it's important that for, for public safety that we go back and make, we make sure that people can be reintegrated within society. Um, and so I had done some of that work when I was at UC Hastings. I would say that every federal um, prison pr uh, program should have a reentry uh, kind of program. Uh, Mr. Chairman, may, may I just make one comment regarding Ms. Robinson? She has not been getting very many questions, but uh, you, uh, you uh, went into how important diversity is in the IP area and com completely agree with you because we know that women and minorities are, are not uh, very uh, much represented in, in terms of uh, uh, people who get patents and all of that. So I would expect that you will do everything you can to uh, have uh, women and minorities uh, be very mu much a part of a system that really um, means uh, innovation and leadership in our country. Yes. Thank, Thank you, me. Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Hirono. I want to apologize to the nominees and their families and friends that I have to step out. There's a roll call vote.